Isn't it amazing that in 2018, things looted by imperialist Brits are still being shown off in our museums and galleries? The British Museum enjoys 700 artefacts plundered from Benin in 1897, as well as the largest gold works from the Ashanti Empire in Ghana, which is part of mine and June's yes. family's cultural heritage. Yeah. There are also precious artefacts from Ethiopia, Greece, and we were reminded this week, priceless objects from the Solomon Islands. Mm. A feast trough looted during a punitive raid by Captain Edward Davis in 1891 has just gone on display in the Royal Academy. Islanders, concerned that they're unable to build a full collection of their own heritage in their own nation, are demanding its return. This should not even be a subject of debate. Where is the moral dilemma in returning stolen property to its rightful owners? France's President Macron has said Europe has a responsibility to return such artefacts. But the best we have come up with is a suggestion for loans. Loaning things back to the people who are their rightful owners. Patronising, colonial and just not good enough. OK, well, that was strong. <laughs> um, look, I, I, my views on this have softened a bit, actually. Really? In the, way, in the following way. I, uh, my, my gut instinct would have been to say to you it's impractical and unworkable to do this. Uh, I'm now a lot more sympathetic to why people are so angry, and that's after having looked at, s at some of the stuff that's in the museums, but also thinking about it in the following way. Um, and by the way, you didn't mention the Kohinoor, which is in the Crown, in the jewels, Crown jewels, right? Yeah. Which is the, you know, the diamond in the Crown Jewels, and it was taken from India. Um, and, and I thought about it in the following way. If you, if you take the Elgin marbles, right, they are something of cultural significance as great and grand and meaningful to Greece as Stonehenge is to mm. us, right? Imagine somebody stole Stonehenge yeah. from the United Kingdom. We would, you know, want it back. And <clears throat> the, the only difference, of course, with the Elgin marbles is they weren't stolen. They were granted by another occupying power, the Ottomans, when they were occupying Greece for roughly 400 years, legally by the law at the time. And that's one of the complications around mm. it. But the sentiment, I think, remains. When you've got something, I think, that defines the very essence and identity of a civilization, say the pyramids and Nefertiti, Queen Nefertiti in Egypt, uh, the Elgin marbles from Greece, Stonehenge in Britain, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Benin bronzes, if they... If they Golden cut... stool in Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If they go to... Yeah. yeah. And, it a sacred you know, and dare I say the Kohinoor, but if they cut to the, to the core, actually less so with the Kohinoor, because it doesn't define India as much as, say, the Taj Mahal does. But imagine the Taj Mahal, right? If they cut to the core of what that civilization um, sees itself as, you can feel... You can, you, you've got to, I think, be able to sympathise with why they feel looted. Historically, they were, of course, looted. And so you've got to have some sympathy with it, even though someone like me would say, how is it practically workable? How can we practically do it? Why is it impractical? It? I don't understand <clears throat> because the practicality some, I, objection. I think, well, I think part of the problem with the Elgin marbles, practically, is, from a with my legal hat on, um, how far do you go with the notion that if something was, was legally granted at the time, but then that regime that granted it is no longer recognised, how far back do you go with that? I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't apply I mean, to just, just let me just yeah. answer the legal yeah. point, and then I'll bring yeah. you in. This is what the British Museum actually sure. says about the Elgin yeah. marbles. <clears throat> Lord Elgin's activities were thoroughly investigated by a parliamentary select committee in 1816 yeah. and found to be entirely legal. Following a vote of Parliament, the British Museum was allocated funds mm -hmm. to acquire the collection. The British Museum is relying on an investigation in 1816 in a regime that existed at a time when slavery was legal yeah. in the Caribbean, yeah. when women weren't yeah. allowed to yeah. vote, when children were sent up chimneys. Yeah. This is a completely And it's worth noting that the Ottoman, the Ottoman regime only ended in 1820. So that tell invest how it was, uh, not how you wanted yeah, it to so, be. So that investigation would have been conducted while the Ottomans were still there. I don't and think that's it's morally... I, I understand yeah. the <laughs> idea that it was legal <clears> at the time, but this is a question of morality, and I think it's quite clear that our moral standards... Uh, I mean, personally, I'd like to see somebody pick Stonehenge up and take it away from you. That wouldn't happen, would it? Uh, but let's just have a quick butchers of what historian and author Dominic has to say, and then I've just got a couple of points from myself. People often raise questions about the Elgin marbles or the Bayeux tapestry or the Benin bronzes. But in fact, the issue much more is about the fact that items move around the world. And museums give us the opportunity to open windows onto the world rather than just look into mirrors of our own world. So if we want to be able to go to museums and see objects from all around the world in the context of the evolution of humanity, then these museums are really important places and they need their collections. Right, so let's have a look at, at ourselves. Right? This is my argument, right? Yeah. We're telling history how it is, and those items ended up in this country, OK? Do you want me now to trawl around the whole world and bring back all our cannons, pick up all our dead and bring everything back here? Are you comparing the Elgin marbles to a bullet? Uh, 
No, a cannon. We've got cannons all over the Caribbean. If we just went around and closed all that history down for As them Madge and said we said, want it back... I think so eloquently. Like, this isn't that's, about that's, a random cannon. Yeah. This is something that is of foundational it's, importance That's something to that Greece's ended up in this history. country. It ended up in this country. <laughs> it's it not like a country. random object. It's no. something that defines well, the identity of people. I would have thought you would understand that ask, because this is a moment where thinking well, about our symbols... I do understand that, but I also understand that the history behind this object ended it up in this country. Can I just say, we all know the best way to destroy a culture is to destroy the symbols that they associate with that yeah, culture. It's yeah. like what ISIS has been doing. It hasn't been destroyed. And, it's or, or confiscate or steal. Mm. And, and let me just say and what... a lot was destroyed. Well, let, me, let, me, destroyed. let me actually pick up what the British Museum have said mm. in relation to this. And what they've said is, the museum is a unique resource for the world. The trustees lend extensively all over the world and over four million objects from the collection are available to study online. The Parthenon sculptures are a vital element of this interconnected world connection. They are part of the world's shared heritage and transcend political boundaries. But what's that going to do with anything? Yeah. The original so owners are saying they want them back. Michelle. Michelle, what do you think about this? <laughs> well, my first thing is, one of these days I'm going to give you a challenge to say <laughs> something, to pick a topic about something good that Britain does. That's my, my first <laughs> I think challenge. I talk about wonderful yeah. things about Britain all the time. <laughs> my second thing is, I just think this is so... Um, it is so complicated because it's common sense. If I take something from you, it's not mine. And if I'm a good person, I need to give it back, even if Amen. I want to. That's basic common sense. But obviously, as we've just been saying, I don't think um, your fellow's argument stood up too much because all he's talking about is you should be able to demonstrate and share and educate people using objects, for example. And you can do that by learning or sharing. You don't need to have ownership to be able to do that. So for me, his argument didn't really touch what we needed to be touching on. But I think that it is challenging because, to, to your point, how far back in history do you go, if I own something and I give it to you and then I'm gone and I'm out the window, whose word then stands as to whose that is. But to then your point, when you mentioned ISIS, I think that was quite interesting because I remember, well, we all probably remember watching mm. footage of ISIS destroying temples. Temples. And it affected me. And why do you because think it, they were doing it? Yeah, it wasn't, my, cul it, yeah, it wasn't my culture that they were dis yeah. destroying, but I felt yeah. for the people who, who respected and, and remember, loved her. Yeah. A lot of these raids, like the Benin Bronzes or the oh. Summer Palace in Beijing, they were completely destroyed. You know, yes. the artifacts we have are all that's left. And the British went in and destroyed people's heritage. And they did that, as you said, Jude, yes. because it was a way of subjugating them. You destroy yes. their heritage and history. It breaks I have them. to bring in the Royal Academy's response. That history how it was. Yeah, but what? Why don't you know if you've got something you stole? I just have to say, the Royal Academy has uh, said, issued a statement. They've said the Solomon Islands Feast Trough is included in the exhibition because it is an outstanding and innovative expression of a customary form, but also in order to honestly acknowledge a confrontational moment in interactions between colonizers, in this case the British and Islanders. We support debate around the questions that exhibitions of this kind generate. That doesn't address the ownership issue. Mm. To your point, Phil, just because something ended up here doesn't mean it was uh, correct. So eight 5,000-year-old artifacts have recently been returned to Iraq, mm. to your point about ISIS. Mm. They ended up here, but that doesn't mean they should stay here. So yeah. I don't think let's, that directly let's, addresses let's the issue the at hand. The Solomon Islands National Museum have maybe oh, the last word on this, see. because the, the, the Royal Academy is, is saying it's showing a confrontation. The confrontation is continuing thanks to the exhibition, and this is what the people whose heritage it is think about it. A large number of the country's authentic cultural artefacts, both sacred and artistic, are held overseas. Many of these cultural ob objects represent the remaining traces of the country's disappearing or extinct cultures. Their gradual or systematic repatriation would help restock and restore the country's mm. cultural treasure. And I think we are in as good a position as any other country to understand so do do how important then? it is. Yeah, yeah, it's when it's countries ask for them back, I think we give them and back. And have they done an official request? The Solomon Islands hasn't, but Greece has. Well, before I lose my marbles, I'm going to nip this one in the bud, right?